RFD TV presents Gentle Giant with Pam Minnick and Katie Kaufman. This week on Gentle Giants, we celebrate our nation's military and a special horse that played an important part in the freedom we have today. 60 years ago, a small but mighty mare carried a heavy load for the U.S. Marines during the Korean War. You'll hear the amazing story of Sergeant Reckless when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. We're excited to begin our second season and we're overwhelmed by the response and passion from all the viewers. When the vision of Joe Ricketts and Patrick Gotch came to life, we knew we were on a path to learn everything we could about heavy horses and share that information. Well, we've gotten the message. Yes, we have, clearly. <laughs> and what we've grown up calling reins to the driving industry, they're now lines. lines. <laughs> but we learned recently that in combined driving, they, they are, are reins. They are called reins. <laughs> a few months ago, one of our viewers, Harold Wadley, a retired Marine from Idaho, sent an email to RFD TV complimenting our show. Well, of course, I replied, and I think that surprised him. <laughs> so a few weeks after that, he sent me this adorable briar horse and the captivating story of her, Sergeant Reckless. Now, while this mare probably didn't have a trace of Clydesdale or Belgian bloodlines traced through her veins, she carried important and heavy loads. When you see her story, I know you'll agree with Pam and I that she was truly a gentle giant. Here is the story of Sergeant Reckless. This is the true story of Reckless, a small Mongolian mare that became the greatest war hero horse in American history. How great? In the 1990s, Life magazine published a collector's edition of America's 100 Greatest Heroes, included among such colossal giants as Washington, Lincoln, Jefferson, was a horse. Believe it or not, Reckless was named as one of America's 100 all-time greatest heroes. This horse was so heroic during the Korean War that she became the pride of the Marines, who honored her with the rank of Staff Sergeant in the U.S. Marine Corps. Named for the 5th Marines Recoilless Rifle Company, also known as Reckless Rifles, this five-year-old mare was purchased at a Korean racetrack for $250 to help transport ammunition for the company. The Marines trained her to step over communication lines, get down when there was incoming fire, and to ignore the sounds of battle. During the fight to retake Outpost Vegas in 1953, she made 51 trips on her own to the firing sites. She carried over 9,000 pounds of ammunition and walked over 35 miles through open rice paddies and up steep hills to artillery that was exploding at the rate of 500 rounds per minute. During one of these trips, Rector shielded four Marines who were moving up to the front line, and she was wounded twice during the battle, but that didn't stop her. After the war, the Marines brought her to Camp Pendleton, where she was billeted at the post stable and fed and maintained by the Marine Corps in lieu of retirement pay according to official Marine Corps documents. Reckless was promoted twice at Camp Pendleton, first to sergeant and then in 1959 to staff sergeant. Her last promotion ceremony included a 19-gun salute for the Marine Corps Commandant who presided over the ceremony, General Randolph Pay. In her honor, there was also a parade of 1,700 troops from her old outfit, the 5th Marines. She died in May 1968, 
A plaque put up in her memory still stands at the post stable. Reckless was an American icon in her time, as famous as Lassie, Rin Tin Tin, Mr. Ed, and Seabiscuit. Yet, today, nobody knows her name. This is her story, an incredible story that's been lost in the pages of history until now. There will never be another horse like Reckless, and her story deserves to be told. If that voice sounded familiar, it was Tom Laughlin, the producer and star of the Billy Jack movies, and an important part of Team Reckless. When we return, we'll meet Robin Hutton, the young historian who is set on a mission to assure that Sergeant Reckless is never forgotten. Stay with us, Gentle Giants will be right back. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. Years after the Saturday Evening Post shared the story of Sergeant Reckless with the world, Robin Hutton read about it in a book. Robin Hutton is an author, screenwriter, editor, and producer who spent most of her life working in major event production and the motion picture business. I got interested in the story of Sergeant Reckless by a, a wonderful fluke. I was doing research for a, a TV series, a pilot that I was writing. I was kind of having writer's block. I came into my office here and I went over to my bookcase and pulled off the book Chicken Soup for the Horse Lover's Soul. And in that book was a wonderful story uh, called Sergeant Reckless, the Mighty Marine. And when I read it, I, I was mesmerized. When Robin Hutton discovered the story of Sergeant Reckless, she was determined that the mighty little horse would never be forgotten again. I think what surprised me most about her story was that it had vanished from the pages of history. In the 1950s, she was a national icon. I mean, she, everybody knew about her. She was in the Saturday Evening Post several times. The first time that the article appeared on her, there was a national outcry to get her home because she was still stuck in Korea. And I think the very fact that she was so famous back in that time uh, and vanished off of the pages of history, I just thought it was going to be my mission to get people to know about this amazing horse. And so I set about trying to learn everything I can and contact people that served with her and knew all about her and uh, um, all the Marines that were in Korea that were still alive that had anything to do with her. I, I contacted them and it took a lot of time. It took me a couple of years. Lieutenant Peterson used his own $250 to buy Reckless from a young Korean. Though the Korean loved the horse very much, he was desperate for some money to buy his wounded sister an artificial leg. When they got her back to camp, they were saying, you know, what, what can we name her? And because she carried uh, ammunition for the recoilless rifle, the rifle's nickname is called a reckless rifle. So they decided to name her Reckless. Reckless performed unusual tasks, and her platoon counted on her. It was her heroics, how she would put her Marines above everything and she would follow them everywhere or anywhere they wanted her to go. And during the battles that she was in, they would lead her up to the guns once or twice. And 95% of the time, she made the trips up to the guns by herself. And that's just not something a horse does. Horses are kind of flighty animals. And it was because the Marines became her herd that she um, would just follow them and do anything that they asked her to do. Reckless was recruited into the Marine Corps in October of 1952 by Lieutenant Eric Peterson. Peterson was the commanding officer of the Recoilless Rifle Platoon, Anti-Tank Company, 5th Marine Regiment. Many Marines who served with Reckless made her come to life with their stories and the memories they shared with Robin, including Bob Rogers, Johnny Newsom, 
Chuck Batherson, and Harold Watley. During the battle for Outpost Vegas, Harold was the last person to get off the hill alive before it was overtaken by the Chinese. He remembers seeing Reckless just struggling up this, the hill, loaded down with, at that time, eight rounds of this ammunition, and each round is 24 pounds. Incoming fire from the enemy was coming in at 500 rounds per minute. And there was so much firepower coming in and our firepower going out, they, they were colliding midair and causing like fireworks. He would see this little struggling horse trying to get up to the guns by herself. A comment from Harold Wadley has continued to inspire Robin. He said there must have been an angel riding on her back that day because he never expected to see her alive after that. And the fact that she made it up and down the hill 51 times and carried 386 rounds of ammunition up on her back and carried wounded off the battlefield, all in basically one day. After 72 hours of fighting, the Battle of Vegas had ended. Reckless stepped onto American soil the 10th of November, 1954. After posing for the cameras in the morning, she later met the media on a stage at the Marines Memorial Club, where she toasted and was toasted by many well-wishers. That night, she rode an elevator up to the 10th floor to attend the Marines' 179th birthday celebration. Reckless's decorations included two Purple Hearts, a Good Conduct Medal, Presidential Unit Citation with Star, National Defense Service Medal, Korean Service Medal, United Nations Service Medal, and Republic of Korea Presidential Unit Citation, all of which she wore proudly on her scarlet and gold blanket. In a lot of ways, she wasn't a horse. She was a Marine. And so I think that they treated her that way. And I really don't think that people back then, they didn't mind the fact that she was honored in that way because she was playing such a role in Korea because she was such a, a, an amazing hero during that time. But then when she came home, she was part of, she did a lot of work promoting the Marine Corps. She was kind of a mascot at that point. When we return, we'll see how Sergeant Reckless has become larger than life. Stay with us, we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. Robin Hutton was determined that the story of Sergeant Reckless was never forgotten and that her memory was honored as the brave Marine she was. As Robin continued to tell the story and interest began to grow, Breyer made a model horse of Sergeant Reckless, complete with her monogram blanket, photos, and medals. Briar generously donates a portion of the sale of each model horse to the Sergeant Reckless Fund. Robin and her team Reckless had a bigger vision, a monument, to be placed at the National Museum of the Marine Corps in Quantico, Virginia. She enlisted artist Jocelyn Russell of Alamosa, Colorado to bring Reckless to life. Jocelyn specializes in wildlife and animals. She is self-taught as a sculptor, but her 14 years as a veterinarian surgical assistant has given her an amazing eye for detail on animals. Jocelyn has been recognized by the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation as one of the artists to watch and named by Wildlife Art Magazine as Artist of the Millennium. From the tabletop statue, the larger than life begins with the sculpture in blue foam. There are several steps and many important pieces to constructing the monument of Reckless. From the blue foam, she gets covered in clay. And I had the opportunity to go up and work on her and put some of the clay on her, uh, on the statue, on the blue foam. And it was a fascinating process. And you know, you're painting the clay on and then you're molding the clay. And so I'm taking credit for the tail. And then they cover her with a patina, which is a, a covering that gives her the color. And she'll have her little um, stripe down her nose and her three white stocking feet 
and those are all the things that the, the foundry will also do in uh, making sure that you know, when they all put her together that she look, comes out looking beautiful, like, like the bronze uh, model that we have. Jocelyn, the artist, is just amazing. And what she has done with this horse, it, you swear it is a real horse that is climbing on this thing. I was blown away when I first saw it. Uh, knowing that we're going to be honoring her with her statue, her monument, and having it at the National Museum of the Marine Corps, and knowing how important it is for the Marine Corps and how much they are excited to have this monument for her. It just, it just does my heart so proud. The museum is very excited about, about this because this opens up a whole nother group of people that will be coming into the museum, the horse lovers, the um, animal lovers, who want to come and honor Reckless, who love Reckless and want to honor her. They'll be coming in to, to see uh, and pay homage to, the, uh, to her monument. Robin has plans to complete a book, documentary, and hopefully it will become a feature film. It'll just be a really fun uh, story learning all about this wonderful horse through the eyes of the Marines that served with her. There'll never be another horse like Reckless as far as what she did in battle. I think the most rewarding part of this whole journey for me has been the incredible people I have met. I have been so blessed to meet these amazing Marines that served with her, that loved this horse, that took care of this horse, that cherished this horse. So much so that even today when they talk about her, they, they get teary-eyed, they get emotional, they, they absolutely loved this horse. Now that she's coming back into the consciousness of America and the world actually, that I, I, I'm determined never to have her be forgotten again. And um, that's my mission, is to never have her be forgotten again. She was not a horse, she was a Marine. And that to me sums up everything. Sergeant Reckless was an amazing horse with a giant heart. To find out how you can become a member of Team Reckless, visit SergeantReckless.com or check them out on Facebook. You can get your very own Sergeant Reckless horse or t-shirt. Switching gears, here's a message from another friend of Gentle Giants, Jack Parnell, who shares our love of Clydesdales. Where plowland meets the heather and earth from sky divides, through misty northern weather, stepping two and two together, with all fire and feather come the Clydes. Blue blood for him who races, clean limbs for him who rides. For me the giant graces with those white and honest faces, the most noble of God's creation are the Clydes. Yes, Clydesdales. They are power without pollution, beauty without vanity, and unconditional love. I remember with great fondness as a very young lad leaning on the rail of the horse show arena at the old California State Fairgrounds, my chin cupped in my hands, listening to the thundering hoofbeats of the Clydesdales, the jingle of the trace chains, the chuckle of the wagon wheels as those shiny wagons traversed the arena. I was dreaming of the day when maybe, just maybe, I might be able to own one of these magnificent creatures. Far too often, uh, we're given the impression that owning a Clydesdale for pleasure is just out of the question, or far too expensive. And that's simply not true. I'm sure that there are thousands of young and old alike who dream of riding, driving, or just enjoying one of these very magnificent horses. If you desire more information about Clydesdales, email Jack Parnell, parnellranch at gmail.com. 
and he will gladly put you in touch with a Clydesdale breeder in your area. We'd like to thank Robin Hunton, the United States Marine Corps, and the 14th Marine Regiment. And all the members of Team Reckless who are helping keep her memory alive. Don't forget to visit SergeantReckless.com for more information. And check <laughs> us out on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. We'll see you right back here this time next week on, on Gentle, Gentle Giants. Giants.